right now on Higher Journeys with Alexis Brooks. Am I, would I be safe to assume that you're saying that this particular, not that there haven't been big ones before, but this one is exceedingly big due to the fact that we're in this Pluto return. Again, larger context. Okay. We've so never the, been through any anything like this before in our history. So I, I'm not saying in our lives, forget our lives, in our history. And the, and the world has not been through anything like this before yeah. in 25,920 years. Mercury retrograde. What is it about this astrological phenomenon that brings a sense of anxiety and trepidation to so many people? Described by some as the Murphy's Law of Astrology, this period that happens roughly three times every year, though its motion only appears to go backwards from our vantage point on Earth, is in fact only an optical illusion. But if Mercury retrograde is just a mirage of perception, not an actual reversal of motion, then why does it threaten and often deliver in turning our lives, at least temporarily, upside down? Astrologer and near-death researcher PMH Atwater brought some very interesting perspectives to this very big question. Moreover, PMH shares why this particular Mercury retrograde, which began on September 27th, 2021, and ends on October 18th, is especially devious. We discussed the larger context and implications of both action and inaction during this unsteady period of time, what it means for us personally, as well as here in the United States and indeed the planet. Let's tune in now to my interview with PMH Atwater. Who else would I check in with during a time like this? We're talking about Mercury retrograde, or as my beloved mentor and friend says, PMH Atwater, you say retrograde Mercury. (laughs) Why do you do, you reverse it. Is it because Mercury retrograde is about reverse? Do you notice that you say that? You don't say Mercury retrograde, you say retrograde Mercury. Why is that PMH Atwater? Oh, it it just pops out that way. (laughs) Okay. I thought there was a backstory to that. Anyway. Backstory. Sorry. (laughs) Welcome, my dear my long, long friend and mentor. Do you know that I have known PMH Atwater since, (laughs) I want to say 2000, 2001. She was one of the first, if not the first interview I've ever done back when it was in archaic written form. (laughs) My, how far we've come. Oh, yes. (laughs) So I'm going to, I'm going to say, let's dig right into this because we've got, we've got a doozy we're in the midst of uh, right now. Now, the good news is we'll start with some good news. The good news is that we are approaching the back end of this particular Mercury retrograde. I believe it will be finished on the 17th or 18th of October, the 18th. And then I always give it a couple of days. Pat, it was a couple of days. It ends October 18th. I see. That's right. The 27th had started. Okay. Let's get right into it, my friend. These are always wonky periods of time, but for some reason, it's even wonkier this time. And I dare say it probably will get more wonky as the retrogrades come toward us. Give us the short sheet first, if you would, PMH, on this Mercury retrograde, perhaps in a larger context, cosmologically, of what the heck is going on. Go for it. First of all, I want everybody to um, to um, put put this phrase in your head: optical illusion. That's what any retrograde is. It's an optical illusion. Um, The planets do not go backward in their orbit, but because of the uh, rotation of our planet in in that particular time space, it looks like it's going backward, but it's not. So when everybody, whenever anybody says optical, uh, you know, um, retrograde Mercury, retrograde Mars, retrograde Venus, whatever, it means optical illusion. 
all the planets go retrograde. When Mercury goes retrograde, it's the closest planet to our sun. Mercury then influences language, activities, walking, talking, business, any type of um, regular activity. Um, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to uh, have a divorce. <laughs> if you want to get a divorce, it's a wonderful time to end things, in other words. But it's a lousy time to begin something. So you you don't want a wedding under retrograde Mercury. If you're if you're planning um, uh, to do some work on your car, uh, like an oil change, whatever, always plan it before the uh, uh, any retrograde period or after the retro retrograde period. This is exactly what I'm doing with our car. And we'll have our oil change and get ready for the winter and all of that kind of stuff on the 18th <laughs> of this month, not before. Mm -hmm. um, because if you if you have if you have anything repaired under retrograde Mercury, it won't stay fixed. Um, you'll have to do it again. Uh, if you get a new job under retrograde Mercury, it simply means the energy will alter and change. So I, I say to everybody, give it about six months. It will change somehow. Either you're walking out the door or, you know, somehow that job is changing. But it could mean it's changing for the better. This happened uh, to um, a, a nephew of mine. He took a really big, important job uh, under retrograde mercury. That, you know, just means the job's changing. So he kept getting promoted every six months. Hmm. They didn't throw him out the door. He kept getting promoted. And until after about a year and a half of that, he then was experienced enough and knew enough that he quit and started his own his own business. He's now a millionaire. So it it means that somehow things are changing. They won't stay the same. So either it will end or it will build an altar and build an altar. Again, remember retrograde Mercury or Mercury retrograde, it doesn't matter how you say it, means optical illusion. So right now is a perfect time to just get out of the house and, and do some gardening once in a while. Mm -hmm. It's a good time to um, just scream and yell. So, <laughs> you know, if you're frustrated, get out the door and scream and yell. Um, it, it's a good time for digging in your garden. <laughs> Garden. And it's, 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 it's a good time to kind of slow down and rethink. Now, this particular time in our history, meaning, you know, what is it, October 11 or October 12, right now, um, you know, 2021, we've got the retrograde, retrograde Mercury happening just before the election um a big election here in the state of virginia where i live this is a huge gubernatorial gubernatorial election that will directly affect washington dc that's how important it is so we've got the republicans and the democrats just duking it out unusually important why is it unusually important? Well, my dear, this particular election is happening just before 2022. Aha, uh -huh. 2000. Let's talk a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, everybody has a chart. I mean, you can chart a car and when it was born, i.e. made, got off the assembly line. 
you can chart a house when it's built and christened. You know, this is your house. Um, you know, what it's going to be like living in that house. You can chart countries. You can chart visit. You can chart anything that uh, was born. So you can chart anything that was born. The United States of America was born at a, at a certain time. And so the United States has a chart. And the U.S. chart, and there are like four of them, depending on uh, what particular date you want to use. But if you use the historical date, um, that particular date, um, how do I say this and be kind? Retrograde Mercury is happening at a time when Pluto, is, we're having a Pluto return in the United States chart. Pluto is a very, very far out little bitty thing that really has a greater effect on human affairs than anyone could ever, ever imagine. And it's because of the way it works. In our particular chart, the chart of the astrological chart of the United States of America, we had a Pluto, our, our Pluto return, that is to say, the planet Pluto is returning to the place where it was when we were born. Um, this doesn't happen very often, obviously, never, never happened before because of the orb of Pluto. It's like 244 years or something. It's, uh, so it is, it, you know, it's, it's happening for the first time for us. Pluto means death of the old, birth of the new. Mm -hmm. um, everything is just cleansed and um, changed during a, a, a major Pluto uh, uh, time frame. Our Pluto return, when it affects us the most, is between 2020 and 2024. We're right in the middle, 2022. But interestingly enough, 2022 is called the critical year. It's when that, that uh, return is exact. So exact to the degree. Literally, it is a time when we could lose our government, we could lose the Constitution, attacks against the uh, Constitution right now, mm -hmm. have a lot of power, have more power than we think they do. We could easily become a socialist Marxist nation instead of a republic. That is, that is governed by democratic rules. This could happen easily and quickly. What's, what's happening now? People are choosing to believe Al-Anon, not Al-Anon, but Q. Yes, we know. Yeah, you, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> you believe, if you'll pardon the phrase crap, instead of fact. And instead of going for what the real fact is, they're choosing to believe uh, the, the louder voices. They're choosing to believe lies in, instead of going for truth. Instead of instead of instead of looking for what it really is, uh, we've got more suicides now, especially with children, than we've ever had before in the history of this country. Uh, we're having people. Um, fighting each other, even at school board meetings. Absolutely. Like, um, we've never faced this before. Okay, let's look again at Pluto when it says death of the old, birth of the new. Pluto cannot stand middle. It's either really bad or it's really good. Pluto is the planet of extremism. So what are we getting now? 
extremes on every single level. No doubt. That's right. I don't care if it's church. I don't care if it's home. I don't care if it's the election coming up pretty soon. I don't care if it's even uh, changing the oil on your car. You're going to be facing extremes no matter wh where you turn. This will increase and get even more so throughout this year and all of next year. We will continue after that to have even more extremes. But the, the, the critical year is next year. The midway point. I, let me interject. You're giving us a lot of information. And as you're saying things, I'm like, don't forget to ask this. Don't forget to ask that. So let me ask this right now. We're talking, you're, you're sort of censuring this dynamic uh, based on the United States. However, I'm sure that particularly because it, this is still for better or worse, considered a precedent setting country. How will this Pluto return affect, will, will there be aspects of this that people around the world would feel? Certainly, because people around the world are affected by whatever happens in the United States. That's right. We're a world leader in that respect. Doesn't matter what we do or don't do. That's going to be felt around the world. Now, um, what's happening in the United States will in some way happen ev everywhere be because of what's happening with Pluto. It's going to affect the Philippines. It's going to affect Afghanistan. It's going to affect, you know, t Tunisia. It's going to affect everybody. Um, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you're going to be affected by what's happening here, how we handle that, and the repercussions. Um, look what happened in Haiti. The, 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 the huge, you know, earthquakes. Again. So now we're getting ships full of Haitians coming here. Uh, literally ships full. That, 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 that want to pass through our border. And Biden is not stopping them. What are we going to do with boatloads of Haitians? And I'm, I'm not, and I'm not being critical here. I'm being honest. Let's look at this. What are we going to do with boat? I mean, they don't speak English. Well, I mean, we're talking about it has nothing to do with the the culture. Obviously, it's just. So you know. I mean, this is what's happening on every level. Doesn't okay. matter who you are, whether you're a kid or an adult. Doesn't matter. I want to read a quote uh, at this time before I lose this, because we're obviously having this conversation within the larger context of what we've all been going through to varying degrees since March of 2020. I'm going to, this is, this is that seminal interview you gave me uh, PMH back in January of 2020, less than two months before the boom was lowered. Let me, let me read these few little points to you and then have you comment based on where we are now. I'm going to quote you somewhat paraphrasing. You said, we're facing something in a new way we have not faced before. Now, I'm going to say, what is about to happen? Because remember, this is January that you said it. What is about to happen will force us to stop right where we are and say, wait a minute. We've got to look again at life. We've got to look again at ourselves. We've got to look again at the world we're living in. Now, I'm going to continue. What is really going on here, you say? I suggest to you, what's going on here right now is the type of energies we have not faced in 500 years that are leading us step by step to the types of energies we have not faced on this planet for 25,921 years, you said at the time. Lastly, you went on to say that what was about to happen, and sure enough it did, would make our lives turn on a dime and that our constitution would be challenged. As an example, this was January 29th, everyone, 2020. I'll make sure that uh, we put a link to that interview. You got to see it. And I remember that interview, I think I had called you to come on the show to talk about the tragic death of uh, of the uh, Kobe Bryant. And it went, and though you addressed that, it went in a whole nother direction where you basically prophesized what was about to happen. So here we are two years, almost, hence, what do you have to say about what you said? <laughs> and yeah, it came true, but 
add to that now, if you want. It's, it's time for everybody to wake up. We absolutely have to wake up. We need to realize that the enemy is us. That is to say, it's how we take things. All of us have to do, we have to slow down, shut up, and do our research before we say anything or do anything. Look what's happening right now in school PTA meetings or any kind of school meeting. You've got to think it through. You can't just yell and scream at people and hit people. You've got to think it through. And it's going to be like this from now on. Think it through before you respond. Sometimes you have to make a, um, a quick movement or decision. Even in doing that, realize that it's you making this action and it, it's you that's going to be involved in the in the response to this action it's it's not just um you're, you're trying to save yourself you're trying to save anybody else you're involved so no matter what happens you're still involved and follow that through. Um, now more than any other time that we've ever lived, we need to look at things like the near-death experience and, and, and the truisms that come from that. The truisms that come from any kind of spiritual study where you come to realize you know, as Pogo said, the enemy is us. Well, not, not in the sense of enemy, but in the sense of the responsibility is ours. We need to realize that um, that we're in charge. Absolutely. And 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 that reactions come from our movements. So what I do is I bless everything. And, and I just realized that whatever I do is in some way going to come for good. And so I keep that in my mind. Whatever I do, it's going to come for good. So it, it, in my activities, I keep that in mind. And that tends to overlook um, or over affect my activities. If I do something that is harmful, right away, right away, I'm sorry. Please, please forgive me. Time to think. Mm -hmm. Right away. You know, I, I, I'll give you this example. It happened a long time ago. Long time ago, but it's still a good example. I was in Washington, D.C. a long time ago, and I was hailing a cab. And the cab driver, I'm sorry to say, was, I'm not sorry to say, factually, <laughs> he was the blackest person I have ever seen. I did not know skin could be that black. So I found myself staring at the man. And he turned around and looked at me. And he started laughing. And I I said, you know, I'm so sorry, but, 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 I, but I do, you know, I told him why, and he said, that's okay, because I know, you know, what I know, I know you're okay, and I'm okay, and isn't it wonderful, we're different colors, I love it, <laughs> And oh, man. Just, look, folks, I'm married to a black man. <laughs> I am. We've been married now for almost 41 years. The marriage gets better every year. It really does. He's my angel. Terry, Boy, by the way. Yeah. Colors, yeah, forget colors. Mm -hmm. 
What matters is how we treat each other and love each other. And, and, this, and this space we make for others in our lives, mm -hmm. realizing that who we have in front of us is a child of God, just like we are, and respect them. And that's how I, that's how I, that's how I, that's how right. I, that's some, how I live with it. Some may feel that this is irrelevant to what we're talking about, but I see where you're going with this at this pivotal time when the cliche is division, divisiveness, at the likes of which we've never seen before, I dare say, that has been set just, up, it, that has been set up that way. Calm and easy. Yeah, but it's been, I want to make this point, it's been set up this way, PMH, because I believe division is in the plan. Yes. And even okay. though we know, and I'm sure most of our audience knows that these, these terms for divisiveness are so surface, they're ridiculous. But now is the time to definitely, if you have a temptation to want to, uh, you know, thwart or argue or over something that you disagree, the polarity of things, just sure, have a little bit more compassion and think. Sure. Oh, and I'll yeah. yell. And I'll also yell um, that isn't it wonderful that we can disagree? It's okay. As they say, we can agree to disagree. Right. Say right. something positive with it. And I do. You bet I'll yell once in a while. Sure. I know. But isn't it great that we can yell at each other? Mm. This is good. It feels good in me. I know it feels good in you. Let's yell some more. If you're enjoying this episode, along with all of the subjects that we cover here on Higher Journeys, then I invite you to join our members only community on Patreon, where we go even deeper into the conversations with the guests that you know and love. Not only does your membership ensure that we can keep this work going and growing, but you'll also get immediate access to our exclusive after shows. Get up close and personal with the guests of the show, along with many other member perks. So click on the link below to join now or visit higherjourneys.com where you'll find the Patreon link. We'll see you on the journey. Thanks. But let's not make that the totality of our experience. Let's get back to the retrograde because this is where we are right now. The time that you, if you're watching this uh, when it's brand new. Optical illusion. Optical illusion with very real effects. Yep. So am I, would I be safe to assume that you're saying that this particular, not that there haven't been big ones before, but this one is exceedingly big due to the fact that we're in this Pluto return. Again, larger context. Okay. We've so never the, been through any, anything like this before in our history. So I, I'm not saying in our lives, forget our lives, in our history. And the and the world has not been through anything like this before yeah. in twenty five thousand nine hundred twenty years. I'm trying to figure out how where to go from here. Again, keeping the retrograde in mind. I've always felt that retrogrades are a time, there is an opportunity that we, we spend so much time focusing on what we shouldn't be doing. You did touch on a few things that we should be doing, can do, can work in our favor. I would imagine that if this is a big retrograde, it's a more potent retrograde for the things that we can do in this larger context of that Pluto return. Let's spend some time. I want to bear down on that because I want to give the journey or something that they can run with and really work on. Let's let's go back into that list and talk a little bit more about it. Let's have a chat about that. Things that you really need to be doing. Now you mentioned divorce and the, the, and endings. Not a good time for beginnings. Wonderful so, time to end things. How about redoing things? We think of all of retrograde as a re-time, remembering, recognizing. Sit down and talk it through. Absolutely. And, and, and at the end of the retrograde period, then sign the document. Gotcha. So uh, it's a good time to prepare. It's a good time to get ready. It's a good time to argue. It's a good, it's a good time to put things in place and, and argue them through or discuss them through or figure them out. And then at the end of the retrograde, which is the 18th of this month, 
then put it in in a document, then sign it, then, you know, then make it real. Speaking of things that come in, let's talk about jobs as an example. I, I find it so ironic that at least for me, and I bet some of you out there, that during a retrograde, you may you may get some of the biggest opportunities you've ever had that would incent you to sign on the dotted line during a retrograde. That I've ahead, seen that happen. Why? Go ahead and do it. Sure. Uh, you may have it for six months. <laughs> you may have it for six years. But go ahead and do it. Because it will still... Uh, go through steps. Remember, remember my nephew. Right. It would change every six months. Um, it would change into new kinds of jobs, jobs that were hard for him to do, were difficult for him to do. He stuck with it. And at the end of several years, he quit the company, started his own job, his own company. And now he's a multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. But he stuck with it. He learned from it. Sure. Um, but it was rough, of course. It, it was. It was like uh, going up a, a really tough ladder. Mm -hmm. But he stayed on the ladder, and he and he went through it all. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can't get through it, if you can't stand it, then go ahead and quit. Right. Right. But again, the point is, I, I guess I'm I'm asking is, is it any surprise that oftentimes opportunities, things come to opportunities in which you need to start something, happen to fall within a retrograde? Is that by accident? Um, I don't think it's by accident. Um, it's on course. It's on course with your life. Mm -hmm. Um, your um, the way you handle it then is your attitude. Maybe you can't, maybe you can't handle the facts, but you can always handle your attitude. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, and how you handle the facts. Uh, because sometimes even a good argument, sometimes even a good fa uh, fight is the best thing that could ever happen. You know, I, I mean, I look back at the time when I died three times in three months in 1977, each time had a near death, near death experience. And later that year had had three major relapses. I mean, I was on my way to becoming a bank manager. And 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 this happened. Naturally, it changed my life. Boy, did it change my uh, my life. And it took years for me to re recover, just physically, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. be able to walk and talk. Uh, but it's the, I can look back and say that's the best thing that ever happened to me. Sure. Uh, but not at the time. Boy, at the time, it was just like th the end of the world. So sometimes things that seem awful turn out to be the best the best thing in the world that could have happened to us. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, you know, sometimes we get slapped around in life. It's never what happens to us. It's always our attitude and what we're willing to do about what happened to us. Mm -hmm. I chose to heal. I chose to learn from this. I chose uh, to be open to whatever the universe might have for me. I mean, it was scary. There was no money. There was no, there was no way to survive. But I chose to be open to uh, whatever might come. And again and again and again. Of course, things kept coming again, and, and I kept going with them. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, this is going to be absolutely crazy, but I'm going, to, I'm going to mention it anyway. Pretty soon, the movie Dune will be on. Dune. Um, there's there's a, there's a lot of gore and horror in the movie Dune, but do you realize that Dune 
is uh, a portrayal of Jesus and the whole the whole crucifixion of Jesus. It is. Um, it, it, it's an extraterrestrial version of the Jesus story. And, and after I died, that was one of the first books I read. I read Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and I read the new series. I became every character in both stories, the good and the bad. And that's what enabled me to redefine life and to redefine myself and what is possible and what I can do about it. There, there's lots of wonderful, I mean, a manual for developing humans. We that got I right here. Just get out a manual for developing humans. Well, you just segued for me. Let me see if I can get this in the shot here. Yeah. It's a great book. And that'll show you what to do. Exactly. This is this was written a few years ago, but tell us, PMH, why that book, this book, of which we'll definitely have a link, is so critical now. Why now? Because it teaches you how to think and it teaches you how to speak. And until you learn those two, you're not going to get in anywhere fast mm. without getting slapped again and slapped again and slapped again. Well, and we're going through a collective slap, so it seems that... We haven't learned to think or speak and listen and listen, most importantly. It, it helps us to be able to handle that and to learn what that is. When my husband and, uh, and I got married and we couldn't, we could have been more different because we were different generations, different races, different histories. My husband had been raised all over the world. <laughs> I just come from Idaho. I mean, he had he had several degrees. Um, my idea of higher education was how high you can clear a corral fence when a bull's chasing you. I mean, that's higher education. Uh, so we had two rules. The, um, number one, if, if, if there's any, any kind of division or problem between us, Pull out the dice, two out of three. You throw them, two out of three. You throw them, you call, you call them, you throw them, two, uh, two out of three. You, you, you go with <laughs> however the dice ends. And the second one was, if you have a problem with your spouse, the first thing you do is take it out on the mirror in the bathroom go to your bathroom look at the person in the mirror take it out with that person where are you coming from what is what is going on in your world and when you get that done then you can talk with your spouse never right away you've got to figure out first of all where you're coming from and that that was that was magic. That's all we needed was those two. And you've stuck by them for forty one years. Forty one years. Wow, that's two amazing. people couldn't possibly be more different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, Terry just recently became a reverend. Did he really? <laughs> reverend Terry Atwater. Wow. <laughs> I just love it. Congratulations, Terry! Please tell him I said hello. That's fantastic. I'm his favorite rascal. <laughs> That is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And hearing a story like that at a time like this, I think is so important for so many around the world. Yes, we're talking about a lot of folks that are uh, that are going their own way, not just not just in marriages, but uh, other family members and Lord knows friends. So, well, so many of them are dying with COVID. Yeah, and with, with and much, but know? other things too. And we're talking we're talking about the psychological ramifications. And again, your manual for developing humans and regaining that capacity to think regaining that capacity to think and to have compassion i also think that is right up there at the top let's i want to i'm going to try to keep pulling this back even though i think well, sure. retrograde i suppose you can only say so much about it but I, there were a couple of points i wanted to make that i think our juniors would love to hear i want to talk about people who were born under a mercury retrograde yeah, now i want to 
that, and me. I when when PMH first brought this up to me, or I read it in one of her great newsletters about a year, maybe even two years ago. I said, let me see if I was, because all of the things that you were talking about, people like us have, I had. Lo and behold, guess who was born under a retrograde? Me. Okay. Pay attention, everyone. And this is no more than a Google search away to find out if you were or weren't. Give us a few of the attributes or markers for individuals who were born under a retrograde. They learn different. They learn different. You learn different. You cannot hear and respond the same way other people do. You cannot figure things out as quickly as other people do. You cannot see things as clearly as they do right away. You take more time. Uh, it, it takes time. It takes, it takes d different ways of being able to respond in class. Now, in my case, I was born with dyslexia and stenesthesia on, on top of the retrograde mercury. So I definitely had to relearn language and how to speak. But anybody with a retrograde mercury that, that you're born, born with, it's, it simply means you learn different. You learn in a different way. And it's, um, oh, how, how could I say it? You're slower. You'll probably have to read more. You'll probably have to think it through more or in a different way. Uh, stick with it. Stick with whatever the problem or confusion is. And, um, and twist it around in your own mind and, and sort of rethink it. Um, and, and give it time. Give it time. Right. The thing that I uh, really want to ask here w with regard to people who were born within a retrograde is how would subsequent retrogrades affect them differently than everybody else we, we i'm sure there's more of a case you're gemini so the sun is in gemini i don't care where your mercury is gemini's do everything quick 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 there and, and retrograde mercury says no I need to think about that. Uh, I need to look that over again. Um, I need to, I need more time. Or I need to see things differently. So in your case, you've got that natural contradiction bet between your desire to get things done and get them done right and, you know, uh, tie up all the bows and your natural um, desire and need um, to say, no, wait a minute here. Uh, I mean, your body wants to go this way and your mind's going that way. <laughs> and, and, and the body says, get up, you know, get busy. Everybody else is galloping over here and your mind's saying, I gotta think that through. I'm not. I'm not sure that I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so for you, um, I hope in your lifetime, certainly now, you have come to realize that no matter what is going on over here that you want to go running after you have to think about that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to slow down and think about that slowing down is not natural for gemini right right but you have to yeah well i consider myself somewhat of a contemplator so i am a thinker i've always been maybe some could That's argue too much. retrograde mercury right but that's me i'm talking about because my being born on a during a year and the time period that was a, a retrograde Mercury, there are people from different 
zodiac that are my question is for the people that have been born under the sign not under the sign but during a mercury retrograde well, that only how are how are they dealing how are they dealing with subsequent mercury retrogrades like right now would it be more intense for those people sometimes yes sometimes no it, it, it depends on the signs and the energy involved right now we've got a heavy energy so right now it is crucial for everybody i don't care whether you have retrograde mercury or not it is crucial to think uh think things through or at least give yourself more time to look at things because there's so much um th th there's so much out there that just isn't true e even zuckerberg on on you know you, you've got YouTube and all these out there are carrying false information. And we now know it. We didn't know it for sure. Well, a little bit. But now we know that their programs are aimed uh, uh, for misleading people. Oh, absolutely. Ooh. That's all. Absolutely. Children. So. Well, let, let's. Oh, need to take more time to absolutely but think not just thinking pmh i'm going to add this because this and is a moving <laughs> right <laughs> but, but this is a critical element we're talking primarily about a left brain process when we're talking about learning to think obviously or or, or not learning to think but but uh, doing more thinking discernment and analysis yes however and this is a big however developing in developing humans it's also about developing intuition instinct that spiritual side of us that we need now more than ever speak to that a little bit speak to that as much as you want because that's got that's that equilibrium that we've got to achieve what yeah. are your comments on that i listen to my intuition i listen to that voice always i listen to that voice doesn't matter retrograde mercury or not i listen of to course that voice. um but I'm always grounded in prayer. And I and I do that every morning. So every morning I have that time uh, uh, with the God of my being. I have that time with um, meditation. I have that time um, where, uh, where, uh, where I work with my body. That is to say exercises. After my meditation and my prayer work is over right away, pay attention to your body. Do your exercises, all of them. Drink a lot of water and then go eat. All of this is done before breakfast. Um, so I'm in place for whatever's going to happen that day. Gotcha. Empaths. Let's talk about the empathic. God forbid you were born under a mercury retrograde and you're an empath, or does one beget the other? But I know that empaths are going through a heck of a time right now. The the ultra sensitives, advice for them, mercury retrograde or not, but particularly now. Hmm? Look out now that um, was written by Anita Morjani. Mm -hmm. She comes from India. She's a near-deather. Um, I know her. She's, um, she's just written a new book. Um, something is the new strong. We'll, we'll get, I, you wrote about it in your newsletter. I'll put up a, a cover so folks can yes. see it. We can't call, we're called the time. Yeah. That's the clue. She knows what she's talking about. She is an empath and she knows what she's talking about. So read that book. It has all kinds of little clues in it and hints and she's good. She's good. Mm -hmm. I know Anita as well. I was with her several years ago in Los Angeles. We did a show and she's been on the show. Mm -hmm. Empaths don't like labels, but we'll, we'll, we'll say the ultra sensitives are again, having a heck of a time and Lord knows, you know, it's not like a spigot that we can just readily turn on or off. I'm sure there's a piece of advice you could give for navigating or regulating as much as possible. The first thing I do is stop. 
I mean it. If you're walking, if you're in the car, I don't care where you where you are, I don't care what you do you're doing. Whatever is going on, stop. So if you're in your car, pull over and park. If you're walking, stop. You can control that. You have to unjangle the nerves in your brain. And the way you do that is you stop, you relax, you hold your arms down, you breathe in, and slowly breathe out. You breathe in, and slowly bring out, and each time you swallow, so you're breathing in, swallow, breathe out, swallow, hmm. breathing in, swallow, breathing out, swallow, do that three times, and then go with the first thing that pops in your mind. That swallowing unjangles the nerves, the nerve endings in, in your brain and all over. The, that swallowing is the magic. Now, if you, if you forget and you're breathing in, go ahead and breathe out, but make sure you swallow. You, you, it's that swallowing that does the job while you're you're in a meditative state, this is swallowing un 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 you know un, un jumbles things. Interesting. And it's Never just that. that simple. It's just that quick. You don't have to think about all kinds of the things. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to wonder or about this or that. First of all. Get your instrument, your vehicle in tune with what's going on. Know that your body can solve this and put you in the place you need to be. Know that. There's, there's no question here. Know that. So you see the problem. You feel it. You let go. I mean, you totally let go. Um, your feet are flat on the floor. You're not sitting. Your feet are flat on the floor. You let go. And do this breath exercise, remembering to swallow. And then uh, go with the first thing that pops in your mind. I have never heard that before. I think I, I thought I had heard just about everything in terms of unique breathing techniques. But this just is really something. Stuff. Just do the simple stuff. And yeah. Jake, Okay, try that journey years and see how that works for you. Because I know I'm hearing from a lot of people that are saying, Alexis, my empathic uh, aspect, I always say I don't wear it as a badge of honor. Now, right now, when all senses are heightened, even with those who are not traditionally empathic or just off the charts. And you're hearing so many people talk about the sense that they're picking up emotions from other people. No surprise, we're living in an ultra, ultra potent time. I say metaphysically. So uh, let's see if that helps. Let's just see if stop. that helps. Even if stop. You're not Always doing stop. Techniques. Even if you're not doing the breathing techniques, just right. stop and allow your, your body to come together with itself. Yeah. Because a lot yeah. of people are feeling like they're out of their body. They're not in there. They're not in themselves. Well, so. be in yourself. Yeah. Be here now. You yeah. used to say. You know what I did back when Ram Das wrote that book, Be Here Now? Uh, that cover of the book, Be Here Now, will come, will come to my mind anytime I'm dozy or not paying attention, when I'm driving. Um, not paying full attention right away, my brain will give me be here now. That's right, and I snap right out of it. I love it. 
So that's, just, that's a simple thing you can do. I do it. Just these little reminders. Well, I think of that often just these be days. Here now. Be here now. Because a lot of people are feeling scatterbrained. They're, they're, you know, so many sensations people are having or, or just odd um, mental states, emotional states that people are going through during this sustained I'll time. Sure you're getting good protein. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. many things and lots yeah. of good water. Salads. Salads are wonderful, but you got to have good protein. Yeah. PMH, thank you so much. You know where we're going, Juniors. We're going to the after show. We're going to take this just a little bit farther in, and you never know where it's going to go. So please join us for the Patreon after show. And I also want to add PMH Atwater happens to have the best damn email newsletter. Mine's okay. <laughs> Mine's pretty good too, but hers is awesome. And I get a lot of inspiration from hers. I have a newsletter like in the, in the world. It's it, it is quite unique, and the way you write and your your signature style comes through in every little nugget you get. So we'll have a link to that too, PMH, so people can sign up for your newsletter because it's really really good. You're not that active on other social media, though, are you? And it's free. Absolutely, it's free. Yeah. Because I know you're not that active on social media. Everybody, I warn everybody. My newsletter is only for the curious. Just if for the curious. You're not curious. That's exactly what it says. Yeah. So we'll do that. Get get the newsletter. And I think you can even get archives, I, I believe. So you can get some back issues as well. Yeah, there's so. an archive there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, breathe, everyone. And don't forget to swallow and be <laughs> here now. We got a few takeaways here. So PMH Atwater, thank you so much, my dear. Don't hang up because we're going next door to Patreon. So I'm going to say, Mwah. I love you, journeyers. And we'll oh. talk to you real soon. <laughs> Take good care. Bye now.